Welcome to this episode of Working Out with Electronics. Today we're going to do curls with the TR1200X. Hello and welcome back to Vintage Gaming Memories. Thank you for checking out this video. For you first time visitors, I hope you will subscribe and continue to come back often. For those returning, thank you for your continued interest and support. I really do appreciate it. In this video, we're going to look at this rare and heavy Panasonic TV with four band stereo cassette recorder. It is model TR1200X that was manufactured in March of 1981. This is the largest and heaviest system in my collection by far. It measures 25 and a quarter inches wide by 12 inches deep and 12 and three quarter inches tall. And it weighs about 28 and a half pounds. Now, I think this is a prime example of why I appreciate all of you watching and subscribing. So what happened here was that a subscriber had reached out to me and made me aware of this particular system that was on eBay and said, wouldn't this be nice to have in your collection? So I looked at the listing and then a few hours later, I negotiated with the eBay seller and I got this in the mail in about a week. So I truly do take into consideration your feedback and suggestions because really this channel goes both ways for input and growth. Now I have to say in almost, I think it's about two months that I've started this channel, I found more things to pursue based on your comments and more appreciation with what I have. So it's safe to say I'm growing. Well, this channel is growing, but you are all the main reasons for that, which I do not take for granted. So thank you all for watching and subscribing. Okay, so let's go back to the system that I purchased. So when you look at this, it makes you do a double take, right? Mainly because of the 12 inch center TV that's in here. I mean, really, a boombox with a TV? Now, I never saw this combination in the 80s. Uh, have any of you ever seen this before? Comment below and let me know, because I'd love to hear that backstory. It's not like people would be carrying this to the park or to the beach. Now, in my collection of unique or, I guess, rare vintage TVs, they all are smaller than this one here. But what this one here does share with the others is that it has the portability factor. You know, it's a TV on the go, whereas today we call those our smartphones. So now let's take a look at everything on this unique system. First of all, I have to say, when I first got this thing, it was beyond extremely dirty. I mean, it was layered with grime and dust inside and out. Now, I haven't fully completed the inside cleaning nor the outside, but I think I've probably done a few hours of detailed work on getting this semi-presentable. Now, my intent with the system is not to use it as a daily but instead to have it as close to gently used as condition as possible. And I'll have it out for display purposes only. You know, also I could demo that for my friends and people who come over, but it really isn't going to be a workhorse type of television because I don't want to blow anything on it. And really, come on, it's a 12 inch screen. It's kind of a novelty thing, right? Now, despite the decades of grime accumulating on this system, it actually fully works. I turned it on after a little bit of a cleaning and I did some more cleaning afterwards. But let's go look at this whole system from the front first. So looking on the front left here, you can see that it has a cassette door and has a tape counter right above there. This cassette has a nice slow eject. I mean, it was like that with all the grime and dust. So at least the springs and the tension on that was working really nicely. But from the left side here, you can see on the top, it has the typical cassette buttons. You have your eject, your stop, your fast forward, rewind, play, record, and pause. Um, also on the grill here on both sides, it has a built-in mic. It's got it on two sides, and here is on the right side. On the bottom corners here, you have the built-in speakers, the left and the right channel. And then above the 12 inch glass tube here, you have this little meter. Kind of hard to see at this point because it's not turned on, but the level meter. 
and there's a switch right here for turning the meter on or off and this meter is used to do um, tuning for the stations and for recording so you could see the red lights going from left to right as you tune in better and then to the right of that meter you have a little light bulb there the led red one is your stereo uh, fm stereo indicator and then you have your radio tuning indicator over here for all your stations then on top of the right hand side here you have a whole bunch of buttons so the first button you have a tape select you have a choice between normal or type 2 you just press it in or press out then you have your mode of stereo or mono then you have this thing here for AFC slash light switch. AFC is your automatic frequency control. The next two over here is for your TV. You have a selector for the band between UHF or VHF. And these next four buttons are for the radio. You have FM, SW, MW, and LW. The S, M, and L are the waves, uh, short, medium, and long wave. And then you have a power switch button on and off. That's the main power switch. Then below here, this is the display for your um, TV tuning indicator. You can see both channels are in the UHF and VHF ranges. Uh, there are four sliders below that. These sliders control your bass, your treble, your balance, and your volume. And I know I have to clean the pots for the, the volume for sure. They're static, so we'll see if that comes up when I plug this in. To the far right of that, you have this function selector where you can toggle between TV, radio, tape, or wine-in mode. And then that's pretty much it for the front. I mean, you have the heavy-duty handle here, and you have the antenna. Fully functional antenna in great condition. Now let's take a look on the right side. Here you have two knobs. The top one here is to tune in the radio and the knob below it is to tune in the television. So that's where those indicators for the stations on the top or the UHF, VHF stations for the television on the front that we were just looking at. To the back of it here, there are two controls for contrast and brightness. And then right below here, this is pretty interesting. This is a TV broadcasting system selector. So you could choose between different broadcasting systems, whether it be Europe and Italy or the UK or for the US. So that's what you would select from there. Now let's take a look at the left side. So on this left side of the system, you have the external connections. You have the remote jack right here. You have an external mic left and right. You have the line out jacks. Um, what else here? You have headphone jacks. You've got external speaker. And you also have this thing here called a beat proof one, one or two on the switch. That's pretty interesting. So. What I've read about that is like when you're recording AM broadcast and then you have this piping sound that you may hear, if that's the case, what you do is you switch it to one or to two and it cuts out the piping sound. So I guess uh, I don't know how that works, but I mean, am I going to be recording AM radio? I don't know if I ever recorded AM radio back in the 80s anyways, but I guess that's uh, an interesting comment down below. Let me know if you know what that is, if you've ever seen it before, because I think that was a pretty unique concept. I've never seen that in any boombox I've ever owned. Now let's take a look at the back side. Let me move the cord out of the way here. So on the back side here you have your antenna terminals and then you have a 12 volt DC plug right in here. And then you've got an interesting voltage selector where you can toggle between your 120, 220, or 240. Then you have your vertical hold, then you have a horizontal hold, height, uh, and a vertical line. 
And here you can see the serial number, the sticker on the model, and on top here, you have the year, the manufactured month and year. And that's pretty much it. So let's try this out and see how this sounds. All right, I have this thing plugged in, ready to go. We're gonna first test the functionality with the radio. So let's go and first check the volume. It's low, we have the power off, the antenna is up, and let's power this on first. And let's turn the meter on. And then we'll go to radio. And we'll select FM. Awesome. I think I might have been playing this when I first got it to make sure it works because I'm tuned right in. So that sounds great. I do know that there is a way to get the lights to display. Here you go. You can see the channels for the radio as well as the television stations if you need it. So I think this is a, a plus. I think it all works for the radio. Now let's give it a shot with the cassette. So let's go and change the selector to tape. And I will put in something that will not be a copyright issue. Eject. I mean, this is a tape that I don't really care either. So if it damages the magnetic tape in there itself, I don't really mind because I know this has not been really cleaned. And, and let's give this a shot. Here's play. I think it's rewound, so it probably has to get past a little bit further. Well, volume's low. You can hear all that static, right? This product does many things. So far too much. Master digitally records speech for later playback. It recognizes spoken words. All right. And it produces an this works as well. The cassette works. So we're two for two. Into the microphone. Um, out let's give it the story. try for the third and final, which is the story. television. Okay, I am ready to give this a shot on the television portion here. Well, at least the, uh, the, the tube itself, not so much television reception. So what I'm going to try is I have the 2600 connected to the back of this unit with the antenna connections. Let's give it a go. Power's on to the outlet. Let's turn this on. And then we need to select TV. And we have to go to channel three. There's, this, there's a great sign so far. Channel three, which would be a VHF. And I need to power on the 2600. And I have Joust in there and ready to go. So again, it's it, it is black and white, which um, which is fine. So I think that concludes it. I think we can say this is a success. This was a very successful purchase. I'm happy that everything works on this. Everything looks great. <laughs> Let me turn this off. All right, I guess we could say we were three for three. We tested the radio and we were able to get a reception at least a clean one and getting some 
music was nice although the volume pots need to be cleaned out as we already know I forewarned you with the insides that I saw were very dirty so I knew there would be some static coming from that not a problem they'll be addressed when I do open this up thoroughly cleaning it but anyhow the radio worked the second ch uh, test we did was with the cassette player and it played music fine or it played audio fine it wasn't really a song and the third thing was the television, not so much a reception, but just the tube to have a display, and it displayed perfectly as I connected the Atari 2600 with Joust. So we were three for three. Probably didn't mention this. I had this on the floor here next to some stuff, and this is the Panasonic operating instructions that I got with this eBay purchase. So that was another cool um, pickup with it. Very happy. Thanks again to my subscriber to notify me about this. I didn't want to pull out his name since he didn't really want me to <laughs> give him too much credit, but I do appreciate it. He knows who he is. Um, I think that's about it. I Let me know in the comments if you have this, seen this, or know about this particular Panasonic boombox TV radio cassette player because I think it's a really cool, unique find. It's, it says it was rare. I looked online, you see a lot of this in Europe, not a lot. I say a lot, meaning like a few people posting this in, from the uh, Europe side. And I think it's a different model they have, like a 1200G versus a 1200X is what I have. And I think there's more functionality on this one. So very happy all around. Well, I think I have to get this thing extremely cleaned up inside and out and get this on display soon. But until then, keep your gaming passion from the past alive by living it today. Take care, everyone.